His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, issued a royal decree pardoning 457 inmates on the occasion of the Silver Jubilee of His Majesty's accession to the throne. The royal pardon reflects His Majesty's keenness on the cohesion and solidity of Bahraini society and the protection of its social fabric and affirms the commitment to the principles of justice and the rule of law and maintaining judicial independence and reconciling the punishment with the human and social circumstances of the inmates in addition to providing an opportunity for positive integration into society in a way that upholds human rights values and standards in line with the kingdom's approach and its regional weight in this regard. The Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Ahmed Lim praised the royal decree issued by His Majesty the King, granting a comprehensive pardon to 457 inmates on the occasion of the Silver Jubilee of His Majesty the King's accession to the throne. Lim Sallam emphasized the royal pardon's firm and steadfast approach reflects the wise humanitarian and paternal vision of His Majesty the King and the commitment to providing a decent life for all citizens. He also referred to the relentless efforts and directives of His Royal Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in implementing the royal aspirations, strengthening the human rights system and presenting projects and programs for convict rehabilitation. The Shura Council Chairman Ali al Saleh praised the royal decree issued by His Majesty the King to pardon 457 inmates. He affirmed that His Majesty's wise initiatives reflect a humanitarian approach and solid values that promote justice, tolerance and societal stability, expressing pride in His Majesty's care for all. Al Saleh praised the role and efforts undertaken by the government, headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, to develop programs and implement government initiatives that highlight the values and principles of human rights in Bahrain. This royal pardon represents a continuation of the royal gestures of His Majesty the King. The first royal pardon was in April last year and the second this September, which reflects a royal approach aimed at enhancing reform and construction, emphasizing the cohesion and solidity of Bahraini society and protecting its social fabric. The royal gestures represent a bright aspect of the reform era led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces. In less than six months, His Majesty the King issued two royal pardons, the first in April and the second in September, reflecting a royal approach aimed at enhancing reform and construction, emphasizing the cohesion and solidity of Bahraini society and protecting its social fabric. The royal pardon, which included 457 inmates, emphasized His Majesty the King's care for his people and His Majesty's high regard for the supreme interest of the nation, while at the same time observing the principles of justice and the rule of law. This royal pardon gives an opportunity to modify behavior and abide by the law. As the nation rejoices, hope remains for those included in the royal pardon and their predecessors who will return to their community as good individuals for their families and society. And for more about the royal pardon, we have the following statement from the consultant in European Affairs, Nuno Martins. Uh, I think it's always positive that uh, the path of uh, the rule of law as the basis of democracy uh, is taking part in the Kingdom of Bahrain. Uh, so I, for me, it's very positive and it's uh, an accomplishment of the rule of law and of the will of the state to accomplish the rule of law. The kingdom wants to follow the path of human rights, and the path of human rights is very important to accomplish the rule of law and to accomplish the, the um, democratic path that the kingdom wants to, to, to have in the future. We also have the following statement from the EU and human rights experts in Brussels, Vlad Oltiano. Um, I think it is a very it is a very generous uh, gesture, um, and I think it goes very much into the into the direction in which you know uh, places like the European Union would go uh, in such a case. So, in other words, reintegration uh, of inmates, um, social programs to 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 make sure that they are reintegrated to the society, um, and given the number, it's also it's also extremely generous. I would say. Well, I think, first of all, it reflects um, a, a, a clearly a system, a judiciary system in which um, 
uh, His Majesty is basically going towards reintegration, so towards uh, the society and towards how do we bring people who have committed, of course, uh, um, crimes, that's why they were, they were in prison, but how can we reintegrate them into the society, to, the, to their uh, safeguard, but also to the safeguard of, of the society, generally speaking? Um, it is a very, a very, good, uh, a very good sign uh, that that does happen, and that that reintegration does, uh, does happen as well, as it is, of course, a very kind sign of His Majesty that uh, such a pardon can be issued and is indeed issued. And to speak more about the royal pardon, we have the following statement from political analyst and diplomat specializing in Middle East affairs, David Powell. Yesterday's announcement of uh, the release of 457 inmates from prison uh, is, is significant because it comes in the context of previous releases of inmates. And um, the official announcement um, again puts this in context, in the context of Bahrain trying to foster better social cohesion, upholding the principles of justice and, and rule of law. And uh, as the announcement um, made clear, um, uh, the 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 the, uh, the aim of these uh, pardons, of which there was a previous one in April, is to balance the legal accountability of prisoners with a humanitarian and social uh, circumstances of the prisoners and allowing them to reintegrate into society. So the most important thing is this: this is giving them the opportunity to to come back into society uh, and play a useful role within within Bahraini society. Minister of Foreign Affairs Akhtab Latif Zayani held a discussion session with the Hungarian Minister of Foreign Affairs and Trade Peter Siarto during his visit to Bahrain. The two ministers discussed the advanced level of cooperation between the two countries and the efforts made by Bahrain to enhance it at all political, economic and commercial levels. They also discussed the close relations between the two countries in developmental fields as well as increasing cooperation in all fields. The ministers discussed regional and developments in international news such as the war on Gaza and efforts to reach a permanent ceasefire, release hostages and detainees and facilitate humanitarian aid delivery. As Zayani briefed the Hungarian minister on the outcomes of the 33rd Arab Summit hosted by Bahrain and reviewed initiatives put forward by Bahrain and approved by the summit. Both sides stressed the need to end all global conflicts and disputes including the Palestinian-Israeli conflict and open up prospects for achieving stability and peace in the world calling for an international peace conference to establish an independent Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital, providing educational and health services to conflict-affected individuals and fostering cooperation in financial technology, innovation and digital transformation. The two ministers signed an agreement to encourage and exchange investment protection between the two countries, develop economic and trade opportunities and attract joint investments between the two sides. 
The Minister of Foreign Affairs and Hungarian Minister of Foreign Affairs and Trade held a press conference to discuss the Hungarian minister's visit to Bahrain. As Zayani welcomed the visit, highlighted the distinguished level of relations between the two countries and the development and growth witnessed at various levels. As Zayani also highlighted the importance of the Bahraini-Hungarian Joint Economic Committee in enhancing trade exchange and attracting investments in both countries. The two sides stressed the importance of the Bahraini-Hungarian Joint Economic Committee in enhancing trade exchange and attracting investments. The Hungarian minister expressed pride and appreciation for the development and growth of relations between Bahrain and Hungary in various fields. He noted Bahrain's achievements during the COVID-19 pandemic and the support and assistance it provided Hungary during that period by documenting the Chinese vaccines used for Hungarian citizens. Both ministers held a meeting to discuss the development and growth of relations between the two countries. The Minister of Social Development, Osama al Asfour, stressed that the International Day of Charitable Work celebrated on the 5th of September represents an opportunity to highlight the leading Bahraini experience in consolidating the values of charitable and humanitarian work. al Asfour pointed out that those national efforts are seeking to enhance charitable and voluntary work in order to build societies. The Minister pointed to the royal initiatives that embody solidarity and compassion and focus on investing in charitable sectors, citing the directives of His Majesty the King to transfer the budgets allocated to the celebrations of the Silver Jubilee to charitable societies and funds which reflect the firm and full of humanitarian giving and the role the rule of noble values. He explained that Bahrain is distinguished by its formulation of sustainable development policies, which made it at the forefront of countries in the charitable field, where the official, private and private institutions adopted these policies and took a way to develop societies and meet their requirements with the aim of advancing developments in their comprehensive concept. Charitable and humanitarian work is a significant aspect of Bahraini society and national identity. This is a result of the comprehensive development march led by His Majesty the King and the continuous follow-up by His Royal Highness, Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The aim is to consolidate charitable work and achieve sustainable development in a comprehensive concept. Bahrain is known for its extensive charitable work, which has spread across the globe through various organizations and destinations. The Royal Humanitarian Foundation is a prominent example of this, contributing to the movement of civil organizations focused on charitable work in Bahrain. The foundation has successfully overcome challenges and ensures sustainable humanitarian charitable work in Bahrain. Bahraini charitable work and societal solidarity are rooted in national values and are extended to all countries, confirming Bahrain's firm approach in the field of charitable work. The Minister of Social Development, Osama al Asfour, met with the Minister of Social Affairs, Family Affairs and Childhood of Kuwait, Amthal Lihwayla. Al Asfour stressed the depth of the close fraternal ties between Bahrain and Kuwait and the importance of enhancing bilateral cooperation in various developmental fields. The two sides discussed efforts to support and empower various segments of society through developmental projects and initiatives aimed at enhancing development and welfare fields in a sustainable manner and consolidating Gulf development efforts. Bahrain's national football team defeated Australia in a 1-0 victory at the Robina Stadium in the Gold Coast of Eastern Australia. The match is part of the first round of the third group competitions in the third round of the Asian qualifiers for the 2026 World Cup to be held in the U.S., Canada and Mexico. The Bahraini national football team hopes to continue its positive results in the qualifiers as it will face its Japanese counterpart in the second round of the third group, which also includes Saudi Arabia, Indonesia and and China. The various directorates of the Ministry of Interior continue their efforts to ensure the safety of students by increasing their presence near schools to achieve the highest rates of public safety, in addition to launching a series of projects and awareness programs that regulate traffic movement and raise awareness of public safety measures to ensure a safe school year. 
And to speak more about the Ministry of Interior's efforts, we have with us Major Ahmed Khalid al Wazan from the Community Service Police, who will speak about the efforts of the security directorates and securing the surroundings of schools, organizing traffic movement, as well as the cooperation of the security directorates with the General Directorate of Traffic and the Ministry of Education. First of all, I would like to extend my best wishes to all our dear students, parents, and members of the Ministry of Education on the start of the new school year. Under a direct order from His Excellency, Minister of Interior, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rajah bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the directorates of the Ministry of Interior have taken all the security procedures and arrangements for the safety of students as a part of the preparations for the new academic year. The General Directorate of Traffic has taken several steps to regulate traffic around educational zones and main roads by deploying traffic personnel and monitoring traffic. Meanwhile, the community police of the police directorates regulate traffic to ensure the safety of students while going to and coming from their schools. Drivers were also informed of essential traffic rules. The General Traffic Directorate works alongside with the Ministry of Education to ensure the safety of students by developing a traffic plan aimed at achieving a safe school year and the flow of traffic for both parents and drivers. The traffic plan included a number of programs to improve the performance of a traffic police, community service police, school guards and school bus drivers by providing a number of awareness lectures in order to provide a safety and facilitate traffic movement. Road users and drivers must adhere to traffic regulations and instructions and avoid wrong behaviors. In addition, for both parents to cooperate with the community police and school guard to organize traffic and raise safety rates. And before we end the news, let's take a look at the latest business news in the following report. The Minister of Industry and Commerce, Abdullah Fakhro, affirmed that Bahrain is committed to further enhancing government services by streamlining procedures and modernizing mechanisms in all sectors to achieve the highest standards of quality and efficiency. The Minister said that in line with the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, the development of 500 services and 24 government agencies has been completed. He said that the development process in the ministry reflects the government's commitment to facilitating and streamlining procedures for the public. He noted that the development process aimed to simplify procedures and enhance service efficiency, resulting in the improvement of 42 services across various ministry directorates. This included reducing application steps and required documents, as well as adopting electronic transformation to create a more attractive investment environment. The minister also announced the launch of a new package of electronic services in the Sigilat commercial licensing system aimed at improving user experience and unifying information about services across all channels. Meanwhile, the Digital Readiness Index 2024 ranked the Kingdom of Bahrain 16th globally in digital readiness among emerging markets. And a report issued by CEO World magazine revealed that Bahrain ranked high in the Gulf among the best countries in the ease of doing digital business in 2024. The report confirmed that these rankings came according to the magazine's Global Investment Confidence Index for the current year, which ranked the top 128 countries in terms of e-commerce and digital market attractiveness from a general investment perspective. This week, 70 million Bahraini dinars issue of government treasury bills has been oversubscribed by 114%. The bills carrying a maturity of 91 days are issued by the Central Bank of Bahrain on behalf of the government. The weighted average rate of interest is 6.25%, compared to 6.27% of the previous issue on August 21st. The approximate average price for the issue was 98.445%, with the lowest accepted price being 98.432%. This is issue number 2032 of government treasury bills, and with this, the total outstanding value of government treasury bills is 2.110 billion Bahraini dinars. Gulf Air has completed the European Aviation Safety Agency audit process, enabling it to expand maintenance services to more regional and European airlines operating in Bahrain at Bahrain International Airport. This qualifies Gulf Air to maintain its Airbus and Boeing aircraft, including engines. The two-year audit ensures that Gulf Air's maintenance systems and activities comply with European civil aviation regulations and standards, as well as additional requirements for organizations outside the European Union. <laughs> 